everybody! I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 60 minute energy upgrade, attunement, and activation session. And this is a follow up session for Johannes. So, the last couple sessions that we've done, we've been exploring soul origins. It's been super interesting. So, I'll put links to those. Um, those sessions in the description if you're interested in watching them. And so this session we're going to continue um, on from there and then do some more stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to read the goals um, and then I'm going to be getting started with the session. Okay, it says, Hey Abby, the last session had amazing results again. Thank you so much. It feels like there is so much potential to work on opening now. I'm very excited about this session. My goal for the session is to improve my long distance energy work. I hope to get it more consistent throughout the day because the strength varies. Weaker in the morning, stronger at night. And increases its strength and my ability to feel and direct the energies. Hmm. Let me just, I'm just absorbing this here. Proving long distance energy work. Hmm. Okay. So the next thing you say is, as um, an upgrade for my energy field with the attunement and activation, I thought it would be awesome to use the frequency of my s or original soul. But I'd like you to chat with my higher self about what will be the most beneficial frequency for me to do my work at this time. It would be amazing if you could experience my energy work from both your and my perspective to further improve it and provide me guidance on how to better use it and develop it further. Okay, I feel guided to mention Nikola Tesla in connection to the upgrade for some reason. <laughs> and wish you a wonderful and delightful session. Okay, give me just a moment here. I'm just going to absorb all of this information in one last time and then I'm going to be getting, getting connected. Hmm. Original soul. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and relax here. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm seeing some stuff, the energy volume on it is pretty soft right now. And the first thing that I see, I mean, there's black everywhere, but there's uh, the shadows of what looks like leaves and bushes. There's also an image of, um, what's the, It's is it a carousel or is it a, um, it's a ride, an amusement park ride, and you have to sit in a, um, like a box thing and then it goes around in a circle really high up into the sky and then it goes lower and then it goes higher around in a circle and I see you on one of these and it's surrounded by a forest and everything is very dim so I can't really see um, I see very clearly because we're working with shadows here and they're continuing to show me you here. You go lower and then you go higher and then lower and then higher and then lower and then higher, round and round in a circle like that. And for me, I'm trying to get in closer, but for some reason there's a, an orb of energy in the way that's uh, asking me to stand back. Um, don't come too much closer. It's not threatening me or anything, but it is... Um, a barrier so it is it is keeping me out hmm. I'm just touching it right now it's quite thick it's not uh, easily poppable it's very thick it's like a really thick plastic or bulletproof glass but it feels more like a plastic but it's not easily uh, something that would easily break apart or come come down hmm but I see that you're kind of alone in this experience and you're talking to yourself. But you're not just talking to yourself, you're talking with other people who are on this ride with you. 
and you're consulting with them for ideas and perspectives. And you stay on this merry-go-round carousel thingy. <laughs> you stay on it. And um, as you go up, you're communicating with them. And as you go down, you're communicating with them. As you go into the middle and then up again and then in the middle and then down and then the middle. And round and round and round and round and round, you are talking with them. Hmm. So I'm having to work with you at a distance because there's this big shield here. So I can't just come hang out with you on this ride and sit down with all your friends so you can consult with me. I have to consult with you by projecting my consciousness into where you are. And what is this barrier about? Is it just a message about distance communication or psychic healing at a distance, that sort of thing? Or is it here for a reason? Um, a protective uh, energy field or something of this kind. For right now, I'm just going to continue to do what I'm doing and I'm not allowed to be in your space right now. So I'm just projecting my consciousness to you. Um, <laughs> the spirit realm is asking me, uh, what is the level of um, energetic volume? So... So when I had to project my consciousness, when I can't come straight to you, I had to project my energetic consciousness. Even if that feels quite soft, it's still, um, it's still what it needs to be. So what you're doing is what it needs to be. And even if it feels softer, it needs to be softer. If it's louder, then it needs to be louder. Um, that's all I can say about that for right now. And I don't feel like I need to make myself any louder here to make it any more effective to communicate with you because I already know that I'm communicating with you effectively. So I don't need to make it better than this. It's perfect just like this. And even for me, I'm not seeing things quite visually clear because I don't need to. Because I can feel everything that's going on here and I can feel the difference between super loud interactions and super soft interactions and they're all quite loud and clear anyway. So they're all exactly as they need to be. So I'm not judging what the volume is of um, intensity or less intense. And you'll find too with distance healing, it's always going to feel all over the place because it needs to be, you know, it's not always going to be consistent. It's not always going to be that way because it just isn't, you know, do you feel like awesome every day when you get out of bed and you're like celebrating life or some days are awesome and some days aren't awesome, you know? Um, but that doesn't mean it's not perfect just like it is. Like, it just needs to be that way right now, you know? So, I'm, I'm literally stopping the ride here, and I'm stopping you at the top. And the top seems to give you access to more. Um, access to more visibility, you can see more, you feel more expanded, um, you feel higher in vibration, you feel uh, stronger at the top, but when you come down to the bottom, it's sort of like um, the ant on the ground versus the eagle in the sky. So as you come down, um, the perception is uh, more challenged than when you go upward. So I just stop this while you're at the top here. And I'm not even close to you. You're like five miles in the distance, so you're really small, but I can feel all this stuff. Hmm. You have conversations with yourself though too, not just with your guides, and you you're arguing with yourself right now. And I'm just hushing that down because we can just let that go right now because we're gonna learn some things. So we don't need any of those frustrations in the way. And it doesn't feel like a natural vent. It just feels like I'm looking at some of your experiences so I can understand you. And it can be frustrating at times. But it's not a debilitating frustration. It just is frustrating. <laughs> so this one is, it's not necessarily a vent situation. But I'm just going to calm that down so it's, it's quieter and we can hear better. Hmm. I kind of want you to leave the carousel 
I, I just want you to leave that and come towards me. And there is a like a guard here, and he looks like um like an Alibaba character. I mean, he looks like a brute, but he's he's got a turban and it's purple and it has a gem with a with a feather on it. Um, he's standing like you could imagine him in Aladdin or something. Like um, he's he's dressed in that manner, and he stands with his arms crossed. He has a spear. He has a very menacing look on his face. His very dark features. And he's telling me I cannot come in. <clears throat> I can always come in, but I it just doesn't feel like I need to. It, does, it feels like the message is saying I'm going to accept this and just let it be what it is. Hmm. I'm starting to notice that you have so many... All right, so you're coming down off the carousel, and the, as you walk towards this, where I'm standing in this, uh, the rim of this orb, I start to see there's lots and lots and lots and lots of people around. Like, like they're just coming through the invisibleness, and I'm starting to see them, like thousands of people. And they're all walking kind of around and behind you, like a rainbow shape. Hmm. This is where we're going to start doing some serious energy upgrades. Because this is all super old energy that you're working with. You're still trying to reconcile and all these people are like yourself. <laughs> There's like a million versions of you in here. <sighs> but your spirit guides are in here too. But they, they sometimes, um, you're not hearing them clearly sometimes. And you hear yourself quite loudly in your own mind and it's not necessarily a bad thing because you're working through your, your your problems and your issues but this is all keeping you low i mean from where you could be once we kind of once we get you above this level you're gonna feel you're gonna recognize it you're gonna be aware of it you're all that's gonna disappear even this orb and this guy and oh, the carousel and the dark shadowies like and the people it's all just gonna disappear because it's only real it only exists because you still exist in this space but you're not after this session And so I'm not going to exist here either because it's pointless. Like, what are we going to resolve by working in this space? That's old energy anyway. So I'm just going to go up a notch and I'm going to bring you up with me. But before I, like, I'm basically going up. If this was, if dimensions were like a really tall house or a really tall building, I'm just going up a floor, okay? Or up several floors, whatever it feels right. I mean, I'm just literally going up a floor. But once I got up there... I had this uh, inspiration to go check with Nikola Tesla and just see what that's all about, okay? Um, so I'm going to do that, which means I'm actually going to go up a bunch of floors <laughs> to go get to him. So let's see. All right, Nikola Tesla. I'm going up really fast and really high. <laughs> he's he's really awesome. I, he, he's, he's a gentleman, and he's funny, and he's smart, and... Like, he's the most attractive guy because he is, like, he's, like, so many valuable, like, personality traits. <laughs> he's just, like, a really awesome person to talk to. Um, and so we're watching, actually, like, I'm experiencing myself going up really fast like a rocket. And there's all this light that's coming out from beneath the rocket. Um, all this light. And it's like the sun itself is being released from the rocket in order to project it or to get it moving upward. Uh, so there's something about energy here in the process of, com well, of, of movement, okay? So I'm experiencing this. Now, simultaneously, I'm standing here next to Nikola Tesla, and um, he's showing me the event that is taking place. And we're talking about raising the vibration, uh, about the energy that um, is required to get a NASA spaceship out off the ground and into space, um, versus the energy that is required for the human being to do the same thing. Um, and what is the difference between the physical rocket ship and the energetic human being? What's the difference here? <laughs> and uh, he says that we're raising our vibration just by standing here and watching this event. 
but when we raise our vibration, it can feel as though we are the rocket ship blasting off into space when we are raising our vibration. I see this is a really big place that he's in, and it kind of reminds me of a like a giant, giant, giant warehouse where you would build things. And he's just one man, and the size of the warehouse is so enormous that it makes him look so small. But there's other people here too that are working for him. This is just the scene that he's presenting to us. And he doesn't uh, go down these stairs. We're at sort of a high platform, and he's not going down these stairs and down to the bottom floor where all these people are kind of walking about. And he's staying up here at the platform with me. And again, it has something to do with the human uh, experience, participating in the physical action, the physical event, versus something outside of the human experience. And what is outside the human experience is not the same as what the human mind translates it to be. I mean, he's, he's showing me that it's a different world. Energy is different than what we, um, we have to work through on the physical level. And I'm talking to him right now about you and what we saw in the carousel and all the dark and everything and how I'm working on getting Johannes up a notch um, or two or however, um, wherever he's meant to be next in this journey. Have you ever talked to Nikola Tesla? Um, because uh, it doesn't seem like you, you've had a lot, like personal like one-on-one -on -one conversations maybe you are but it feels like it could get more personal than that because even when I'm talking to him um he's showing me that um Johannes uh, like he would like to have more of a deeper connection with you like more of a deeper conversation with you and I see that you're a bit timid because I'm calling you up to where we're standing and you're timid I mean you're really timid to be stand next to Nikola Tesla Hmm. I put Nikola Tesla in like women's underwear <laughs> and I say, come on, Rand, it's totally fine. We're cool. <laughs> it's just like, don't be afraid or anything. <laughs> you still shy about it. <laughs> Nikola Tesla is like back to his kind of professional way. And it's taking you time to walk up. Um, you're kind of coming from the energy world and you're coming from down here. So we see you and you're slowly walking around to where these energy stairs are. But you still haven't reached them. And the energy stairs are going to take you up to where we're standing. But it's energy stairs connected to what is like a physical place. Um, so they're also physical stairs, but um, they're energy stairs. So it's a very slow process to get you up here. And it surprises me because I thought you would just be here, bam, like right away. But you aren't. And so I just see him kind of turn and look down at you and kind of welcome you to come up. You must be like, why are you so shy? You're really shy right now. Hmm. Yeah, I hear the word change and change is um, kind of a big thing. And change is a part of growth too, right? And to be doing things differently is a part of change as well, but to be feeling things differently is also a part of change. Because where you're at right now, Johannes, and where you're translating things is is just one level of where, where you're going, all right? And that level is actually going to change in a big way. So everything you think you know and feel um, it's it's a part of your reality right now and it's effective, but that is all going to be you're going to be going much higher than that 
And I don't even feel it's a, like telling you we're going up a notch. Like that seems like we're not going up that high, but we really, I mean, we're taking it up to like from floor one to floor, like 50,000. Okay. <laughs> so don't like, so we're going up as high as we can and we're going to really go as far as we can go. But obviously part of raising your vibration and getting to the next level, letting go of old energies, now experiencing this you process through the experiences at this level um, until you get to a point where you feel like you're not growing anymore and then you you ante up again like you you go for it again because you're ready to you've hit the ceiling of growth and now you're ready to you've hit the ceiling of growth big time i don't know why you're so slow though i mean is it shy or is it just density i mean are you holding on to a lot of stuff is that why you're so slow And we're not coming down to your level. Like, you got to come up to our level. Oh, man. It's like centuries and centuries and centuries are going by as you're, like, slowly, like, you manage to get up another step. And there's just so much weight involved with it. It's very confusing. Uh, so i just going to let you continue to come up here and I'm just see what Nikola Tesla has to say. Hmm. All right, he wants me to do it a little bit differently now because we're not going to talk. We're not. He's showing. He's telling me some things about the way that I ha I am seeing and um, how we're processing the information right now. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, so he's opening up um, a scene, and I'm just walking through a, like a circular film into an experience. Okay. And I can hear the sounds of crickets and birds chirping in the morning and the dew on the grass and um, he wants me to relax in this uh, experience and he wants me to feel like I am covered in dew too like I am a part of the grass and the grass that is hearing the birds chirping and you know it's like cricket sounds like um, cicadas and um, f frogs and um, noises of nature He shows me that you're here too, but you're kind of hiding behind a bush. <sighs> Why are you so far away? Why are you at such a distance? You're not going to be at a distance anymore. This may have something to do with how you're doing distance healing. Because there's no distance. There's no such thing as distance. So there is no such thing truly as distance healing. We just use the concept to help people understand because people think it's distance healing, but really there's no distance. So you need to realize, step one is realize there's no distance. There's no such thing as distance healing because we're already a part of each other. So there is no distance healing. And how close can you be to the person that you're healing or to the thing that you're healing? You can even become it. Like you can become it. So let's say, um, let's say you want to heal Nikola Tesla, you know, well, let's say you want to help him in that lifetime um, to, for some reason, you can step into another time, another place, and you can step into his very being and you can simply share love with him. And you can step into a spirit and share love to his, with a spirit. Like you can step into anywhere. You can step into the person. And so I could step into you right now, Johannes, but part of what I'm doing is we're learning about your energy field and I'm communicating with your subconscious mind or deeper consciousness or soul energy. Um, so that way the learning is beneath the conscious level, but here I'm speaking through it. So it's going to reach you at the conscious level by you watching the video, right? Nikola Tesla wants us to bring it back to the scene. So I'm part of the grass and you're hiding in a bush and you're listening to what I have to say about distance healing. And this black cloud needs to go because it's actually a bright sunny morning, but for some reason there's this black cloud and everything is just dim and dark in the morning. Like it's like it's still nighttime, but the sun's out. And why is that cloud here?
Hmm. So I tell you, I need you to remove this cloud. You have a something going on here, Johannes, because this timidness, there's something else here. This isn't just you. It's an inf inspiration. It's something different. And it's holding you back. It's it, whatever this frequency is, is majorly holding you back and slowing you down and creating barriers and resistance because it's not, it shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be that, that way at all. And so because it has such an influential way, um, you could define it as demonic energy. <laughs> it's not evil. It's not evil. And, but it's like, um, it's resisting change. Demons resist change. Like they just let me be what I am and let me do what I want to do. Um, even if it hurts other people and makes me feel better because I can't cope with what I'm dealing with on the inside. Um, and don't change me and don't heal me because the wound hurts, but it feels good and hurting others feels good too. And it's just chaos, right? And so that's what demons, demons are basically. That is their psychology in a nutshell right there. Um, and this too is, um, is holding you way back and it doesn't want to change and it wants to pretend like this is normal and I just need to take this slow, but it's abnormal for you. It's not really you. It's totally not you. It's um, a hardcore shroud and it's manipulative, super manipulative, which makes it demonic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm still figure, trying to figure this one out. It's tricky because, you know, is that why it doesn't want me to come close? Because it's a, in, intimidated by me, intimidated by Nikola Tesla, intimidated by a higher vibrational plane, intimidated. It shouldn't be intimidated because that means it's intimidated by love and what love can do to heal you and help you grow. And so if it's intimidated by that, it's holding you into darker, lower dimensional planes. So it is again, um, behaving demonically. Okay. But it isn't like an evil spirit, but it does have quite a, this frequency has a lot of control. The more I talk about it, the more you step back further and further, and the more you try to darken this place. And Nikola Tesla is here. He's freaking bright as the sun. He's so sweet, too. Like, the nicest guy. The nicest guy. <laughs> he is. He's the nicest guy ever. So he's just standing here really sweet and kind and patient and just bright as the sun. This is a very dirty energy and very trapping of you. Just a moment here. I've got to fee I'm still trying to figure out how to resolve this one because there's a lot of techniques I could use. I could just trap you in a box, but I'm not going to do that. It doesn't feel like the right thing to do. I could just step inside of you, but for some reason, this odd uh, distance, there's 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 so many details here. It'd be hard for me to explain literally everything that's going on in my mind and the communications and everything. But I'm still looking for the the right balance here to to help this situation. Ah, I've got it. So instead of me stepping into you, I acknowledge that you are a part of me. And this is also me, too. And so now you can't go anywhere. You can't run away from me. You can't hide from me. You can't resist me. You can't create a giant block to keep me away. You can't pretend anymore because you're in my world. <laughs> you're in my universe now. <laughs> and we're going to fix this. 
And we're gonna help this get better. <sighs> this is a, uh, hmm. Very silent, very goopy, very thick like molasses, like thick, 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 thick. Molasses that's like almost dry, but it just doesn't, it's really thick covering, energy covering around you. I'm going to warm things up because I don't know why, but the, the words Nikola Tesla is um, bright as the sun and the brightness of the NASA shuttle blasting off um, like the sunlight is behind is like pushing it into space. There's something about sunlight here. Also, I'm trying to bring the sunlight out on this dark morning. Um, so there's something about sunlight energy as well that's really essential here. And that may explain why you feel more energy attuned at night, but maybe there's something here because you see more um, night or dark appeals to you more than the sunlight does. Um, but that isn't actually true. So there's a major energy imbalance. This isn't uh, just something I can just fix it like that. I have to outsmart it, figure it out, okay? So I'm still working on this. So I'm just having this molasses version of you, just, I'm just having you stand in the warm sun and the warm sun within myself. And I'm bringing out the warm sun inside of yourself too. So we're like a mirror inside a mirror inside a mirror inside a mirror and forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm, I'm bringing the warm sun out within myself to um, sort of melt or help this molasses move off while I'm also inspiring the warm sun within your own heart um, to also continue with this um, dissolving of this energy which is also me inside you know bringing the warm sun out you know on and on and on and on and on and on and on my warm sun to your warm sun to my warm sun to your warm sun like on and on and on for all eternity <sighs> All right, it's a slow process, but it is melting. What is it that you're afraid of? What are you hiding from? Man, I will tell you what, Johannes, the energy here, it starts at the top of your head and it's like um, ripples of, but it's very slow and it's moving down very slowly, okay? from the top of your head, I can feel all of this energy just slowly moving. I don't even know how you've been energetically breathing with this. You just had, it's just needed to be exposed today. And now that it's exposed, this is a big one to work on. <laughs> and no wonder, like you're ready to raise your vibration for sure. Let's just get this out of the way. <laughs> it's still trying to come down and out. <sighs> Wow, why you're angry um, about this? It's like you're having to shower naked in front of a lot of people, like laughing and pointing. Like there's something um, that feels degrading of you. Um, that this uh, molasses energy that's super thick and super slow to get out of the way, um, that we're removing this and you're forced to have this experience right now and it is degrading of you. But nobody is laughing and pointing at you, and nobody is um, putting you down at all. We're actually here to support you. So you see this demonic energy is uh, translating it as a negative experience. That the love and the healing is the worst thing that could possibly happen. So again, it's very much so on that level. It's a demonic energy because it's resisting the love, okay? And it's making it out like the love is burning and hurting it and it's just tormenting it. But really what's happening is that demon is healing, okay? 
There's a lot more skeletons in the closet here, but this is this is a lot here. We're still it's still coming down. It's very slow moving, but it is moving. And as it continues to move down and out, there's things being revealed to me that are kind of creepy. The first thing I see is a white room and it's dirty and it feels dirty. So you can see the dirt on the walls and on the floor, particularly um, it's uh, like in the cracks of the walls too. It's just a dirty white room. It's made out of cement. And there's a, a girl and it's hard to make her out. It's like she's got a noose around her neck and then a um, some sort of white uh, bandana around like, but it's in her mouth a bit, like it's around her face. And uh, there's a man that's made out of like black mush um, and he's like mummified goop uh, standing in like near one of the corners here, just standing here. And this is a, there's something to this image that this is a unreconciled energies. What does this mean? What is it about? I don't know, but these energies are saying, look at me and we're going to help this reconcile. Okay. This is a skeleton in the closet energy, um, image. <laughs> hmm. And the molasses is still melting here slowly, but surely it is coming down more. Hmm. There's more. There's like somebody else's. The scene is trying to merge with another scene. And um, I'm still just one thing at a time. So I'm still trying to understand the balance here between the little girl and this man. This mummified man in the black mesh. And this little girl is in white. So we got white and black going on. And a white room that's dirt, dirty with black dirt. And there's a feeling of bondage from both the white and the black. Um, both of them are in bondage and separated, but they're both enclosed in their own um, prison with each other. And they're not able to reconcile the relationship either. Because he can't speak, he's also bound up, but he's all in a black tar goop, so it's like stuck. He can't, his mouth can't even open. And she also can't speak. She has a noose around her neck. She's like being choked a bit, you know, so she, and she can't move. Her hands are bound behind her back as well. She can't do anything. She's just a little innocent girl. And this is like, a, a like an insane asylum room. Like I see the door and it has a uh, glass on it, but it has these like wire parts of it. So if you try to break the glass, like there's wired mesh in there. Um, and they're heavy doors, like really, really heavy doors. And um, the feeling of being um, locked inside. And the feeling of, um, it feels like it is a place where uh, crazy, you know, people go here. So the energy of this room, it keeps showing me nurses and pills that are being handed out to people who have crazy eyes and weird behaviors. And then here you are in this room together. And it's like not, the pills aren't working. The nurses aren't working. The trapped inside this room isn't working. Um, none of this is uh, helping to heal the insanity. It's just... It just containing it somehow. So you see the molasses is still coming down and it's revealing this going on inside of yourself. The girl doesn't want... It's like she could try this again. But sometimes it's just easier for her to just stand in this position with these issues. And it's easier too for him to just be bound up and they just simply look at each other and they stay in place and they don't change. Because to change is really asking a lot from both of them. And I feel her exhaustion here with having to face this. He's really numbed up. So he's mummified and numbified. <laughs> he's numb. So 
so I'm trying to, I mean, she seems reasonable. Like, she will take off the costume and just face him. But he seems a bit, like, he's he's unreasonable. But I, let me see what I can do here. So, okay, so what ends up happening is everybody stays in costume, so to speak. Um, but I bring the light into the girl's heart and I bring the sunlight into the man's heart. And the light is going to help them to overcome the resistance in their own minds. Because the light then is in their heart. And then the light within their heart now overrides the thoughts that are creating the resistance and the agony and the struggle. Because there really is no struggle because love is the only thing that is real. She is so, so exhausted and when the light comes in she just wants to collapse on the ground. And he was trying really hard to ignore the light and he winces and he closes his eyes and he focuses really hard on ignoring it. But she can't ignore it. She just like, she just lays down on the ground and all of these, like the noose and all this stuff is still there, but she's not choked. She's just resting. And when she falls asleep, he has to fall asleep then too. Because they're connected. And this is all happening in this contained room. And the air in here is stifling and dirty and they need to get fresh air. I mean, they need to be reconciling this in a healthy space. Because behind closed doors, locked doors, is not the healthy space for them to reconcile this. And they don't know how to cope with a lush green environment. I'm putting them in just like a green little, like a little green environment where it's just the right size for just them to actually talk to each other. Some pretty benches in here, like a little waterfall. I mean, just make it really beautiful and and uh, nature natural and. But they aren't coping well with being outside of the room. A lot of this uh, energy and the scene that we're looking at here, Johannes, is you have a lot of, of energy that is weighing you down from the front side, and I can feel that starting to uh, lighten up a bit. It, it, I mean, there's just whatever this energy is has been holding you way back, and it's exhausting, and it's been covering up things. <sighs> And it's kind of, you're kind of lopsided right now because there's still, this energy is still um, on the back side. <sighs> he doesn't want to show his true face. And, but he's starting to. He's starting to reveal that he's just a man, like like a milkman or something. He's got like a little hat on and white clothes. And she's wearing a white dress. And she's just a little girl. But he doesn't want anybody to know what he looks like. He just wants his face to be hidden. He doesn't want to be seen. Hmm. This is getting vulnerable here. Everybody is still trying to just avoid the elephant in the room energy. Like, they're still resisting reconciling this. It's getting very uncomfortable in here. Slow process, but we're getting there. This milkman is a lot more disgusting looking than just a nice looking milkman guy. 
he has a developing a giant just grotesque looking belly full of uh, like gross like dead organs and worms and things and he's bloated with it and he has black veins going out throughout him and his face looks very gross and um, I say you you're more beautiful when you're just honest about what you are and what you're going through because nobody has judgment here only you are judging yourself here <sighs> he's getting darker and more black little girl's just silent just sitting on this bench she looks like she's dressed for like confirmation like a white pretty white dress for church and like white shoes and white little hat and she's really cute He's getting more and more gross and black and looking like like a living tumor or something like a but like in it kind of uh, beats uh, as well. It's like uh, it just looks like a mass of tissues, black mass of tissues, and it's just like beating like a heart, and it's huge, and it's just taking up this whole bench. And she's just on another bench next next to his bench. And they're kind of looking at each other a bit. This is very, very complex scene. I mean, I can't just make it heal. Like, there's so much resistance and there's so much density. And so many unspoken words and... Very exhausting energy. And this would be majorly holding you back in ways you wouldn't even realize it. <sighs> She needs to find the courage to speak up. So with her having the noose around her neck, that means that she's not, she's not able to speak. You know, she's got roped up around the neck, so she's choked like she can't speak. But he also doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want any responsibility towards what she has to say. So he's just going to keep metamorphosizing in ways that um, continues to create the problem instead of the solution. See demonic energy also at work here. But it's not evil. It's just majorly unreconciled and it's been going on for too long and it's dense and it's it just needs time to have a self-realization. <laughs> I'm going to bring Nikola Tesla in and see what happens here. Uh, he says, ah, so you're still reconciling the garden. And he shows me that we. this is where we started, was here. And he, he needs this, he needs you to re reconcile this, Johannes, because it's preventing you from working with him more directly. Um, he sees this. He sees this in your energy balance. And uh, he says, uh, he tells me, Nicola tells me, tells me to see both as you. And so I'm transforming the girl into you and this, this body tissues into you. So I see them as you. You're okay with being both. Like, um, you feel like normal. You feel totally normal. Like, there's no issue. So if I take you out of this and then we just see the issues, then it's very hard to digest it. It's very hard for your energy field to process this. But if you just become these two, then it just feels very normal and then you can just be, keep being these two, two parts of yourself in these uh, ways, which isn't really helping anything. So I'm going to take the Johannes out of them both and you're going to just stand here with us. 
and now you're going to look at these two parts of yourself with me and Nikola Tesla in this garden space of morning, okay? And it's morning time. But we can't see the sun because of all of these energies are like blocking it out. <sighs> see what you say. You uh, struggle to speak um, how you feel. And that comes from the female side. And I say, just say something like white picket fences or red hot Ferraris. Like, just say something, because the only way to get the throat working again is just to say something, even if it's not what you want to say. Just say something. Um, you're trying, and it comes out something about powdered donuts. A homemade powdered donut, something like this, because I can see them and I can taste the power, like the powdered sugar. And you start to cry, and I say, just say something else, like whatever, just something, because you're using the words of fresh powdered donuts um, with the intention to heal the inability to speak. So we got to say something, but we're working on speaking. So you have to start with baby steps here. It's starting to crack this place open. Um, you're speaking about the ocean and uh, the coral reefs. And when you, when you just, I don't know what you're saying, but you're, but when you speak it, I can tell you're speaking it and then it just comes through in these images. And then um, it's starting to crack um, like a crystal ball that we're inside of here. And there's water inside of it too. And you're starting to feel bound, um, bound up and you're starting to look like both this girl and this man. And you're on the ground struggling with yourself. And so you're both mummified and your hands are bound behind your back. You're both choking and resisting and everything. So you're in a fight with yourself. And Nikola Tesla is just like as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> it's just like, just, he's here for you, you know? He's here for you. And he loves you. And he wants to help you with this. <laughs> and so that way you can have a closer connection with him. <sighs> And I say, you know, say something else. Just, oh, like your energy is very exhausting, but it's moving. And I'm like encouraging you to keep speaking. <laughs> say something. Just keep saying just whatever weird random things. Just say stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, you're speaking gibberish words right now. <sighs> You're really stuck in the throat, in the upper gut, in the lower gut. Ugh, really stuck. And it's harder and harder to even speak. But you have to keep speaking. Like, we're going to resolve this. This thing is going to resolve, man. This is like an insane energy block here. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, you just took a nice deep breath and you say, why am I doing this to myself? And I say, I don't know why. <laughs> but you don't have to and it doesn't have to be this hard. You say, and you say that it, it like it, but it does because I need to, I need to understand why I'm doing this and I need to understand what those parts of me are feeling. I do, just do. And I say, so what What do you want to do about this? Say, Abby, I, I don't know what's on the other side of change, is kind of what you're saying. Like, you show me you've been in this crystal ball for a long time, um, and you've developed in here. Like, it's been your incubation center. Like, you've been developing in here for so long that... Like, what, what is um, everyday life is now alien life. Like, it's so foreign to you. And so um, part of this is also resisting totally, totally, totally unfathomable new things. That it, it's not going to be easy for you to understand it. 
I say, so what? I mean, you're on that type of journey. It's like supposed to be confusing and weird. <laughs> Mm. You say that um, you have been playing the role of both in order to keep yourself um, in a place of safety. And you acknowledge that even now you're resisting change. And Nikola Tesla and I are here and we're saying that why are you carrying the burden all by yourself? Because you're expecting it to be all your experience, but we're here with you in this experience. So your experience is part of our experience. It's something that we're sharing with each other. And if it's hard, you know, you have friends here that love you and that care. You've been um, hiding um, this, this Johannes version of you is the one that's manifested the demonic um, resistance energy. And he's pretty good at uh, making it seem like uh, other things. But really, he's been holding you back. And he says that he's been playing uh, like hide and go seek games, like he's trying to prevent you from growing because he's there's some things that it's like you're going to see things or face some things that were hard in other lives that you're going to be revisiting and it's going to be it could potentially be hard in this life too and he's trying to keep you safe from those so he's acting like ego right ego is a survival technique ego makes sure that you're avoiding hardship at all cost even if it's um imprisoning you inside yourself so um he's kind of acting like this as well and i say so you're aware of of the growth that johannes can experience and you're the one that is afraid with all the other versions of johannes that are ready for this so why are you the one that gets to be like king of the roost here like you get to decide what everybody else experiences Mm. He's uh, not. He's uh, starting to become a very ugly looking, very monster looking. I'm just ignore him. I'm just like, okay, Nikola Tesla, we've come to reconciliation here on this, and I'm not gonna talk to this anymore because it, we acknowledge this isn't not needed anymore. We're aware of it. We know about it the shell can be cracked and we're going to just let that go into the ethers of what was because it's it's not even doesn't even exist anymore now because we're already moving beyond that and moving past that and you're a new version of yourself okay So you're just kind of <laughs> stretching and expanding right now and just we've seen it we've gotten to know it a bit we've gotten to know it enough we don't need to hang out in that conversation it's just gonna keep going round and round circles so we just let all that go now we've done everything we need to do okay so let's see if you will come to Nikola Tesla now all right, I'll tell you what, Johannes, your throat is circulating and your solar plexus and sacral chakra are really circulating. Um, and it, it's, it's a bit exhausting, to be honest. So if you feel tired after this session, you're actually getting new circulation going on in these places. Your heart, too, is part of that as well. But it's, it's actually creating a little bit of exhaustion as your body adjusts to it. Because it was adjusted to, to this before. And now there's activity that wasn't going on on this level. So your body may feel a bit exhausted as it adjusts to it. 
um, Nikola Tesla is there's something about you, Johannes, and the sun, the actual sun. And um, he wants to take you into the sun to show you more things, working with the energy of the sun. So there's something about attuning you to the frequency of the sun um, that would be very rejuvenating for you. And so we're going to like, I mean, it's it, we're just literally, you're like, um, all this stuff is behind you, but there's like a big stick, like stick of tape. And so it's kind of stuck to you still, but not so much. <laughs> but we're going to try and take you to the sun here in just a second. I'm really helping you to get unstuck here. Okay. All right, so that, all right, so many things are happening right now and it's more stuff, okay? So the tape that is being unstuck is like pulling out your intestines from behind and it's bloody and gross looking. And I see you in the sun and the sun turns red. But we have to understand why is it communicating like this? Why isn't it ready to just be healed and to move on from this? So there's something else here. And what it is, is you have to, there's something about you have to reconcile this stuff inside yourself by choice. And so I'm talking to you and I'm saying you, you still are not fully letting go of what is now behind you. And now you're letting it hurt you and pull parts of yourself out as you try to reach um, the next experience. And then you're contaminating that experience with what was. And none of this needs to be anymore. So why are you holding on to hurts? Like, why are you holding on to the self-sabotaging hurts? Because they're doing you absolutely no good. Like, your self-sabotaging hurts are actually ripping your intestines out right now. Like, that you're polluting the sun with your blood. Like, this is uh, serious here. We got to figure this out. Hmm. Um, Nikola Tesla is just... He's smiling and he comes over and he gives you a big hug. And um, he shows us how far you have come and where you are at right now on this journey. And we can't force things into place. They have to become, become um, ready on all aspects um, to go full circle. And he's so so patient. He he has eternity, you know. He's in in any rush. And he says, take some time to get to know yourself. Take some time to connect with the sun. Take some time to um, explore um, the meaning of what what is holding you back inside of yourself. Take some time to get to know me. And. I mean, we've reached a really beautiful plateau and we're beyond so much stuff. It's just like a little bit is still like holding on to you, but you're still kind of holding on to it. Otherwise, you would be totally beyond here. But that just means there's a little bit more work you got to do inside yourself. <sighs> hmm. You a smile and... Uh, you actually start to glow and you you say, I want to remember what the, the light and the sunlight, um, I want to remember the meaning of this to me. And Nikola Tesla says, um, come with me. You're still kind of connected to that, but even less so. And uh, he says, don't even worry about it. Don't even think about it. Um, that will just dissolve in its own time and um, you start to glow brighter and brighter and then um, you're entering into a really bright sunny place like it's just like entering into the sun 
And there's something about the sun and energy and light and energy. And uh, I mean, there's so many things that I don't understand about it, but there's uh, like physics type stuff going on here. But right now you're literally in a bathtub of sunlight. You're bathing in the sunlight right now. And you are the one with the sun here in this experience. And Nikola Tesla is here with you too, as well as myself. <laughs> and you're going to be in this state for a while. Like you need to just meditate here for a while and experience being in this place. <sighs> very bright and it's safe and it's for you <sighs> okay Johannes wow hmm <sighs> just getting disconnected here session is going to give you a lot to think about and I'm looking forward to the upcoming sessions too because you're ready you're going to be ready for them and you're going to grow so much <laughs> I'm a little out of it still from this journey it's really interesting oh. <laughs> thank you so much for this experience Johannes and thank you too for sharing and uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching, and I wish you all a wonderful day.